using the power of drowning and war crimes, truly the powerhouses of our economy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hapless Settlement. The printing Hapless Challenge for Oxygen Not Included Spaced Out continues. We're working on our base at the moment. We've got a number of things we need to do today. First up, we need to get our Pakupon sorted and finished. And I just love saying Pakupon, Pakupon, Pakupon. And we need to sort out our metal infrastructure because while the shitty water situation with our refinery is great, I think you using the crusher for some base materials as well as some lime is probably going to be a good thing. Either way, between having a pond that actually is big and contains all our bad water for all the Paku to just breed in and give us food without any work, and sorting out our lower base areas and possibly getting the beginnings of some carbon dioxide management going. Those are on the table, but the thing I'm really excited about today is automation specifically getting our first automatic piece of the farm going and finally we need to start working on our cooling nuke so without any further ado let's dig in right so when you have given yourself a to-do list of like eight things to do in an episode it's good to actually think of the order when to do them so, so the pakupon is definitely going to happen in between tasks like we're going to order some jobs and while any duplicate isn't working on those jobs they'll probably be working on this so first things first is we're just going to priority six this whole marfracker uh except for our reed fiber which can just chill the next Next thing we need to do if we are going to do all of that is consider our wall on the right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this room, 92, 96. We need to go two out to actually be in full ranch size, which is slightly less than ideal. So we will revisit that later. I think the quickest win we can get is going to be getting a rock crusher going. I'm going to put it on the same electrical grid as this bad boy because the electricity involved is massive. But also, I don't think these two will ever be active at the same time. So that's all we're going to do for that for now. And we're just going to let that happen. Okay, so there was that lovely annoying sound saying, hey, this thing is ready to do things. So I'm going to just see if I can reset the whole thing and actually get this thing so it's not even available to print like ever like yes this thing is disabled but as long as it's fully charged it's going to keep getting annoying every time we want to use the skill changer so i want to just put a nip in that bud auto is it going to be you no nope, auto is fueling our refinery there we go now to see if this worked good thing we have got a high priority hmm okay and we're breaking stuff for science hey it worked I think. Like, worst case scenario, it at least slightly worked. So yeah, we can't even assign skills while it's in this state. Okay, so it just totally doesn't work. Cool beans. We're just going to assign some skills while we're here. And then just not worry about that. I just jumped the gun on putting electrical engineering on Camille. When I should have thought for at least a quarter of a full second uh, about what we wanted her to do. Oops. Luckily, we do own a skill scrubber. But it's we're going to have to actually use it now. The food supply isn't comfortably low so we're just going to manually intervene with it momentarily they're not doing nothing back here but i would say it's slowish progress the sooner we have access to these eggshells and these pakus the more resources we get for free here comes otto making a path hopefully he doesn't go and trap himself there now i'm gonna have to send a ladder up there and meanwhile they've gone and built this thing so we are going to do some basic metal amounts and we're gonna just never ever have eggshells that are not in lime form and i don't think there's anything else we want to use this for i'm perfectly happy having this handle our iron supply and eventually our steel supply but if we are going to be manually doing ores i'd rather they be specifically the ones that we you know can do or even can only do this way 
or the ones that we need faster because we do need quite a significant amount of metal for our auto sweepers and conveyor laters. We're going to need a total of two, four hundred, eight hundred for just two ranches. And there's a third ranch that's going to be twelve hundred in total. Uh, also, I can probably demolish these ladders. That's not a task we prioritize there. Although we do have the bonus side effect of these ladders are just going to become food for the hatches. I'm just now noticing this ceiling robot and it's 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 amazing. Like teleporting to other planets, cool, but random ceiling robot, ah, it's it, it fits. It fits so well. Like Clay's ability to set a scene with fancy artsy things is just unparalleled. Very quietly just going around the map and inspecting everything while they get on with it. So I haven't had a really good look at any of the really weird devices that there are in the expansion that are just around the map. So the supply teleporter output, I assume it's got three ports for what I assume are gas, liquid and solid. So we can teleport things, I guess, from other planets to or other planetoids to here as well as teleporting duplicates both to and from other planets as we see here so as cool as it would be if we had a way of moving these i don't think that's going to be an option i think much like the neutronium stuff in the map um such as the volcanoes and the hot springs we're going to have to work around this which is probably why it's a good thing I'm building this pond. But I think it does need to actually affect, influence the actual plan here. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to limit the pond at this level here. And even floor it off along here so the only air comes out here. We can just pop deodorizers on either side and secure the air supply. And make it nice and easy for our duplicates to just pass the pond. I want to set the pond up so we can just funnel any uh, packet we ever find into it. Put some automation devices into it and just honestly never worry about it ever again we've gotten some new lime that we've never been in possession of before as well as a lot of fungal spores this thing is working nicely otto is channeling the eye of the tiger so i was just busy planning the basics of digging out this biome and actually clearing it completely so we don't have to worry about any slime or get all the water where we want it to be but i'm noticing the biomes don't separate as cleanly as i thought they did like i thought the obsidian was a very clear divide between biomes and yet here's there's here's some slime on the other end of the abyss lies interesting in the meantime i've basically built a little bit of a pattern so we can dig on this side which is going to be the tricky side and a little bit more ham ham, ham fisted on this side i know a lot of people use ladders to match their floors but we're we know we're emptying this area out we know we're putting a specific floor in this and having this area just be as it is so the main argument for building floors floor high is how high duplicates from dig from where they're standing they can dig through this ladder so that is going to be a non-issue in the meantime though we are going to building as little as possible actually we're going to start working our way all the way up here and up and over Clearing up the other side of this might not be a priority right away, or it might definitely be a priority right away. I don't actually know. It's definitely one of those two. Uh, <laughs> but the slime, more than anything else, absolutely has to go. I'd say this is going to be good enough. And we're going to dig out all of this just so we can safely seal this biome in. That's not where I meant to click that. A little bit of lag. For those of you screaming at the screen, I fixed it. So I know one of the things I mentioned I wanted to do this episode was get a cooling loop started. And that's probably going to be easier said than done because while it's going to be easy enough to fit it in here in theory, and practice it's actually going to mess with our space. So I'm thinking it should I actually going to have to put it down here. So I know I said one of the things we want to do today is get a cooling loop going. But it's going to be tricky given the space that we have to work in here. Because in this space here we can't really put any walls and without messing out the hatch area. So I'm thinking we're going to have to replace those water containment units a lot sooner than I'd probably expected. And that'll be where we put our steam generators because they don't actually need to be walled in. 
and they don't negate the hatchery from being a hatchery. The area below here, however, we can definitely use as our other part, as the guts of that device. It'll be easy enough, we just dig out this too wide area here, have a layer that we have our steam things, and we pop some water containment further down. The other difficult part though is we need plastic in order to actually make that happen. Luckily, we have some dreglets over here. Now, I don't usually get into the draco hatching specifically, because I don't usually find a lot of benefit in it. But if we have a look at the draco's database entry, I know there is a way of actually getting a glossy dreglet. As for how we hatch those, that comes from just eating mealwood, which is really easy because mealwood is a thing that we have. We just don't have it right here. So what we're going to need to do is get the dreglets into one of our natural areas where there are a lot of... Right, so this is turning into one of those uh, instances where... I have one objective, but in order to get there, I have to make more plans. In order to get that, I need to make more plans. The other downside to this area is directlets need chlorine or hydrogen in the atmosphere. I'm thinking if we properly block this area off and just leave them for a few generations and we don't tame anything, we don't accelerate anything, the dreglets will just handle themselves to making plastic dracos. And when they die, they will drop plastic. No, no, that's silly. We're going to have to actually put a taming thing. As much as I'm overcomplicating things, I think I'm ignoring the obvious, which is dig down, find oil, get plastic. I have 2.5 kilocalories of meal mice. So I'm guessing, you know, a crumb. Is it even in here? I don't think it is. <sighs> I thought we were done with this, with this uh, drama. Luckily, I think we may have caught this hatch mid lay. There we go. Oh my god! I've never seen that before, it's horrifying! <laughs> the nice thing with having exactly three dupes is a barbecue feeds the entire colony for slightly over a day. Like, 1.3 days worth of food, essentially. I have this lovely space that all this is supposed to go into and we're not using it, so maybe that should be our first priority. Right, so our auto sweeper perfectly can see inside the one hole and misses the other hole. That's part of the reason for the size of this design. And we're gonna take ingredients from the left, store them infinitely in there, put them either into the barbecues or into the containment directly into the right. I think that's how this works. No, no, we actually just put the ingredients straight in the left and then pop in the right. Right, so the sweeper grabs from this hole here, pops them into here, and then when it's done, feeds them into eventually here. I've actually decided Screw overcomplicating things. We're going to just move the whole evolution chamber to slots to the left and pop things directly from here into here. It's going to be great. Getting it to there is going to suck, but once it's done, it's going to be so efficient. The part where I'm really making life difficult for myself is how we're going to get this water into here because we're going to have to just mop it all, all of it. So water here. Yeah. Or we're not going to auto bottle and we're going to grow We're going to top priority specifically the mop job and that's going to get most of it into a water container type thing. One eternity later. Oh, this, this feels so ridiculous doing it this way. These guys are like, I have better things to do. Uh, I don't know why the water's not leaking back over there. But I'm going to go with honestly not complaining. And then we high priority this because this is the thing we are doing right now. We're going to need about a thousand keys of water in here. Luckily, that's about the amount that we've got. A little bit more than that's fine because it'll leak over and we can mop it back up again. Nobody in the colony can do the research. Okay. Enable it. Camille, we're gonna have to do it. Yes, who needs a well thought out base plan where you can just red alert everything? Uh, so Abe is the one we actually should be uh, reassigning. Let's just disable that again. Because of how his skills 
his skills were very, let we need this, let's get this, whereas everyone else has a very specific role that is required. I mean, Abe is going to continue to be that sort of dog's body, but uh, at least in this instance, he's going to be a dog's body, able to do the jobs we need him for, for. So the skill scrubber wasn't working because it actually was drawing more power than the wires could handle. So it's probably as good a time in the area to actually move the lab and give it the intended power setup that it actually requires. Two, three, and then doors. So we pop that there and we do some stuff, have its own isolated battery. And then the three things we're going to have in here are the skills, skill scrubber, supercomputer, research station. We're going to cancel all of these because I put them in the wrong order. We're going to put the research station first. So stations, first the lab, then this big lab, then the skill scrubber. And we're just going to door that off. Once again, food is an issue because I'm bad at things, I guess. So what we're going to do is we are going to auto wrangle our surplus. Storing five of seven, storing three of six. You see, and this thing is not actually counting the eggs. But if we go to the room overlay, this actually says it's got seven critters in the 89 tiles. We need 96 to make a full room, which is why this is going to be very relevant soon. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and actually make the digs on this side a higher priority. I'm leaving this here so that we can solidify all of this and then have our safety wall and then we'll be able to wall in from this side and make sure no bad gases actually go where they're not supposed to. In the meantime, priority seven on this and then we can take the little uh, babu hatchlings. Two, three of them ought to do. Put a nice, very high priority wrangle on them. This is a once off job, so it doesn't matter that we're putting them high. And within the next day or so, I expect Camille will have dropped them all off here. This also needs to be seven. Amongst critter drop-offs, we've got two sixes, which we can reset to five. His priority is no longer really an issue. And hope somebody actually delivers them before they untie themselves. Does this help? Okay, Abe's cooking. Very important work. Camille has no interest in what's going on here. Guys, even one of them. Even one of them's fine. What? What? I feel like nobody sets a hauling and that shouldn't matter because this is yellow alerted. Um, okay guys, the build jobs are nice. Is anybody gonna, um, with the hatchlings? The hatchlings, guys? Guys, the hatchlings? Okay, I guess they're just gonna be adorably tied up until they starve to death or something. We have a sage hatch? Kill it with fire. That is, oh, excellent. Camille's, Camille knows what to do with that one. Except for the part where they're still not. I found the problem. I'm not proud. Oh, look at that. Miraculously, suddenly it's the only job in the base that's worth doing. Funny how the duplicates actually deliver the hatchlings when you actually have the critter drop-off set to receive hatchlings. Who knew? On that note, I'm faced with a quandary of whether or not I should swap out all their food for sedimentary rocks so long and make them into stone hatches so that I can eventually make hatches that are not stone hatches, um, smooth hatches, because we like automation and automatically converting metal into refined metal. That's lovely. And if we realize we don't have enough metal to keep up with demand, well, we just murder their asses. On the subject of resources that we may or may not have too much of, we almost have the 1200 copper we would need to automate all three of these places. I'm going to do the kitchen second because the food is actually proving to be more of a problem than I originally expected. So we're going to grab this, give it a deconstruct the priority nine. We are going to mop up the very wet kitchen also at priority eight. We're going to make 
cooking always be a priority night? If it can be cooked, we do cooking. We copy the conveyor rail here and we wait for that set of commands to be done before we do our next set. This almost feels too perfect. I need to seriously hope that the second spot in that little hole there doesn't actually have any hatches meat pop up into it. But if I'm correct about how this works, this is going to be so perfect. It occurred to me that I could gamble with things maybe working amazingly or spend a few more resources for a slightly uglier setup that definitely works. Now, I'm still certain that the hatches weren't yet out of uh, here. We don't necessarily need the second wall over here, I think. We'll, we'll, we'll see, but I'm, I'm confident on this one. Copper is going down a little bit, but I'm fine with it because look at all this construction. <laughs> There's our copper. We have one mechatronic who's delivering before building, which I, I don't get, but okay. Right, power. We forgot power. Now, one nice thing about this power setup is that these don't actually burn any more power by... Okay, well, that just got completely away from me. Yeah, these things don't burn any more power just by existing. They just pull power when they're in use. So the relatively high voltage on them isn't actually a problem. In the meantime here, click edible. We say yes. Uh, we say no to meat specifically. Uh, I think that's all of it for now. At some point, we're going to have to be a little bit more discerning about that. But for now, we can just pop everything in and hope for the best. I really need to stop building all of my wires out of iron. Not that there's anything I'm going to do about it now because these wires will eventually be replaced with heavy watts. But, well, not heavy watts, conductives. But that is a thing we're going to be very careful about when that time comes. Cool, so this right here is currently an unreachable build. And the tracking behind this is weird. I think they need to be standing up here to reach there. Uh, we'll, we'll have to check. Luckily, I actually saw a video covering that weird angle in this today specifically. Now, I'm not saying it's a perfect system, but it's worked so far. I just need to see if they can access. Let's see, there are 4,000, yeah, unreachable. So I guess they patched this out, so this whole design is completely irrelevant after all that. Okay, that said, currently it is still a box of carbon dioxide as opposed to oxygen that is a neat storage. But seeing as we have this problem, I need to be less worried about where our kitchen, our food storage is uh, versus our cooling storage anyway in relation to our kitchen because now what we can do is we can have our kitchen and we can have this whole separate dedicated area that that is just where we send the food. Like, I don't mind doing a bit more initial work in order to make our actual long-term solutions more viable and more efficient. Like, work once so you don't have to keep working. That's kind of going to be our motto, motto in this playthrough. So I'm not going to worry about where we're putting that right this second because I don't know yet. In the meantime, there's been a good bit of work happening in the background. This battery is now full, so this isn't pulling nearly as much against this wire. My hope being that we can scrub Ape without everything going horribly wrong. I may need to get a switch involved in this process at some point, but let's see if this works. It really is satisfying knowing that I'm doing a skill scrub on purpose this time. But the more I look at it, the more I think that this machine isn't some weird science so much as it's just shaking his brain empty. <laughs> oh god, I, I never realized that was how this thing operated. Just forget. Doof. If he doesn't vomit when he gets out of this thing or... Cool, yeah, it just walks off, no sweat. In the meantime... Ava, I think you don't grasp the concept of having your skills scrubbed. Oh, it's out of power, and he's gotten back in and continued the process, which is interesting and also concerning. Hey, I think you need to go and eat, buddy. <laughs> Luckily, the wires are still not overstraining. Okay, now, now we can do this. Abe's lost his hat, enable the building. Use the skill scrubber to actually give Abe some skills. We want to keep that. We want to keep that. And now we now we can actually get to think. Do we want to do field research? Do we want more digging? 
I think what we should be doing is field research and grilling. And Abe, your hat can be that hat. As always, we dis we disable the printing pod and also re-disable the new skill scrubber. But look at the research, it's happening again! Yay! Just a little bit of work in the background, getting our uh, food to automatically transform itself into meat using the power of drowning and war crimes. Truly the, the powerhouses of our economy. I've had a long-term idea about how we can automate these even more. Uh, specifically, we're going to have to do some bridge through getting a second run of supply controls to the. So these won't be manually filled, they'll be filled by the auto sweeper, which will be then fed by a second conveyor set, basically. But we're going to need a lot more copper to even think about that sort of shenanigans. We finally researched animal control, which means as far as food is concerned, our research is done for the very foreseeable future. We need to start thinking more about medium term things, uh, long term base survival. Basically, we have everything we need for a spawn, but after that, we're going to start needing our cooling loop and our or plastic to actually make it so we are going to need steam research which includes the steam engine now what okay but also applied materials study we're gonna have to figure out what that is so let's 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 sort out plastic first let's that is that is a thing we actually know what we're doing with so you know let's let's do that let's do that a lot I'm not going to go for the conductive wire right off the bat because copper is a rare resource still. We do not have a lot of manpower to make it or a lot of electricity with which to make the manpower. Sentences make sense sometimes. This is not one of those times. As soon as Otto's done building all of this stuff, which is going to be amazing once it's done, he's probably going to go and arrange for more energy around the base. In the meantime, Abe's got an independent power supply to do some research research out of but that's gonna fade pretty quickly at which point he's also a person who can do that eh, I don't win that race so this whole construction job's just about done all that's left is to set it and we're just going to say hatchling egg and we're not going to copy our settings because we are not having a big brain day and then the auto sweepers are going to need power because i completely forgot about power as a concept again it seems to be my move and then priority while we're in this view construction nine let's do it in the meantime we've got a nice hole here but not much more progress since earlier on today so let's work on that shall we these are our six construction uh our very important is sitting on nine this whole hatchery i'd like to keep as manual as possible so that if we accidentally evolve all of our hatches here we still have enough left over like this is our arc until We've solidified the structure and also the breeding set up in this, this pure hatchery. I'm going to use this one because what we can do is then run this pipe or this conveyor down here and then pass here or even have this one just be dedicated first through here and then to the food. In the meantime though, starvation is a problem. So we're gonna check everyone's reproduction again. There's a lot of babies here and the babies I like to try and keep because it's that much more time when they exist and they can hatch, but there is a five cycle cooldown before they actually become useful. So we're gonna go ahead and just drop two. Let's make it three of the small ones. There's our combat. And that's going to be enough food for plenty of time until this starts actually working. Move debris into storage. No, we're not going to do that because that's going to leave way too many options. Unreachable food. It's unreachable because it is in Otto's inventory. I, I assume that that is not what the actual problem is. I'm going to need you to go ahead and cook that, Abe, because there's people starving and all the food is unreachable because it is now in the grill. 
God, if this is what killed somebody dead, like, ah. Uh, oh, look, there's our food. It's all there. It's reachable. Go get it. Hey, but are you the really hungry one? No, it's not you. I assume it's Otto. 500 calories left. You need to go and eat, my friend. Ooh. Uh, look at it go. I'm almost worried that he didn't... I was almost worried that he wouldn't make the walk from there down to there. Okay, so change per cycle. 28,500 kilocalories per cycle. He's a duplicate, so minus 1,000. Bottom of stomach, minus 500. So, I guess that initial number was just wrong. Duplicate can learn an obscene amount of calories before starving okay so they seem to actually max out at i think four thousand um unless i'm you know horribly mistaken which is perfectly possible it's more than a day's worth of food so they tend to keep themselves over a full day of, of food when they start actually complaining that they are quite starving they actually have a ways to go still which is good it's nice to have that early warning there's actually no point on having this higher than a nine because the only person who can do grilling will automatically max priority cooking anyway because he's got his priorities set on huh as i was saying he's got his priorities set on cooking anyway he's also are very big on the research but research isn't that high of a priority task anymore i've been poking at this thing's priority throughout the episode and they just haven't with this whole situation oh look you picked up some rocks okay and you're gone again they have dug out this side though which is nice which means we can work on our extension walls but we're gonna have to do this the very painful way now the question is do i do these one at a time or nah nah here's what we do we backplate we backplate because we're smart it's eventually gonna be a ranch as well so we're gonna backplate here then dig this out and backplate here then backplate here then we're gonna keep going back until we have to dig out auto doesn't get slime lung in here i'm gonna be amazed fossil fuels research we're not even gonna touch that that's fine and camille hard at work making sure we don't starve ever again. We've got a couple of eggs here. More of these building jobs happening. Camille done with some ranching, so I guess doing some delivery work, if not actual building. Or well, yeah, ordered some sweeps just to neaten things up a bit before I get completely bonkers. Otter finding resources right here to do the work. Buddy, what are your germs like working in here? Helps if we select them. 27% food poisoning, 12% slime lung, 73% zombie spores 73 percent of exposures will result in oh this is his resistance i'm not saying i messed up i'm not saying it so that's still unreachable what maybe they can reach it if they build that out there we go i figure i might as well make this area remotely symmetrical so we're just going to build out the bottom of the pond as well We've got four hatchling eggs in the evolution chamber but we are going to need to keep this process going for a while before it actually bears the kind of fruit we want. Also, the populations are getting a little bit low in these things again. Again, like having the fruit available gets tricky when the numbers are this low in terms of how many can sustain how many. We have, however, got our first incubator on its way. We have our first incubator. By my math, one incubator sustains a population of five hatches if you keep it unpowered anyway. So we're going to need, let's see, three times eight, I guess, 36. So seven of these things. I don't know if there's space for that many one two three it doesn't want me to do it because i don't actually have the resources i don't know uh one two three can i just cancel you and copy uh i guess i broke everything cool one two three four five six you know what six of these is fine probably once the system reaches an equilibrium, I think six will be more than enough. And if it's not, this room is going to get big enough to fit the seventh eventually. It's not wasted space, it's space spent on aesthetic. Just putting a higher priority on the rock crusher just for a bit so that we can get enough to finish this little mess. We need 200 more to make another conveyor loader to pop over there. And I think from then we'll sort of be good to go. There'll be some population being maintained. There'll be an overflow for the food going through and we'll be good. So how the system's going to work is we just move over to the conveyor 
conveyor overlay. Here's the full system. Hatches pop out little AOs and they get picked up by this and yoked into the conveyor rail. The conveyor rail then, instead of going directly to the conveyor chute, will instead go down here and get dropped off out here. The auto sweeper will then pack the incubators, which will have the higher priority. And if the egg then doesn't have anywhere better to load it than in an incubator, it will then pop it into a conveyor loader. Uh, for now, the system is going to be set up to handle three, but if we extend out this conveyor rail, eventually we'll be able to do a second set of these and just pass them along. Sugar engine, small oxidizer tank. The hell is a sugar engine? It's not an actual engine, apparently. Uh, refinement. Well, refinery, well, that's paddy. I guess a sugar engine is a thing we can craft. Come on, one more copper run. I just need 100 more copper and then we will have things and stuff that work. In the meantime, Otto's happily doing the things, but I think power is not our actual problem. Let's just be cheeky about this. Yes, Otto. Or yes, yes. Finish that quickly. We're somehow 50 copper shy, which tells me that this recipe only does 50 a pop. Yep, abusing the yellow alert as usual. But this time for an unusual reason. I need them to actually dig this out so that we can get at this Paku Filet. Because there we go, digs are reachable. Gold, pond, everything leaking everywhere. Yoink that while it's still fresh. And now we have a new, we do not have a new recipe. I would have sworn that was going to work. I think you need two of these in order to actually unlock the thing. Can they reach this? Storage unavailable. Okay, 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 okay. What about... Huh, it doesn't actually have that as an option in there. Or in there? I'm very confused. And uh, barbecue's going off. We have so much of it. Ah, I don't know if that's really cool or really not helpful. Right, we have to dig this out. Yay! As I said, we now have a new recipe. I've come up with a new recipe. So that's gonna be the main that's a preview of the main reason we actually want this Pocky Pond is so that, you know, food just arrives and is ready and eventually I actually want to pop a couple of auto sweepers, maybe two auto sweepers with a loader in the middle that can just grab any fish meat that just happens to appear in the pond while these wild paku just live out their lives in their happy little fish hole and from there we'll have that much more food just readily available without well with minimal labor so there's so there's a preview of the pond as we wanted to eventually have and we've made some pretty significant progress for it we've also got some major strides with our automation we can always just fill it out a little bit but for at this point it's all quality of life differences our digging's a bit further our labs finally in a reasonable place where we can actually keep it for a while and our food is a lot closer to being stable when it doesn't go off we didn't get to the cooling loop because i didn't i realized that there's a lot we still need to get our hands on so next episode we're going to be trying to get our hands on some drecos that we can launch them for plastic especially over here specifically and we're going to hopefully have the rest of our food fully set up so that we don't have to actually worry about starvation anytime soon once once we've got that sorted, we can deal with the cooling loop, and that's going to keep our food even more well preserved. I think a cooling loop over here is going to be great, so we can keep our food here, right by the mess hall. So that's what you have to look forward to. I'm, as always, grateful to all of you for tuning in. Remember to click those bells and whistles, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!